we're going live again. And we're going to go live again. So we're back to another live session here. Uh, Mr. Pellegrini has uh, once again uh, stepped, uh, stepped up to the plate, and he is going to be joined by Mr. Brian Ashcraft. Um, a lot of you he, who are familiar with his work may be familiar with his work through Sake and Whiskey. He's recently uh, released uh, the Japanese Sake Bible, which is a fantastic look into the world of sake. Um, but we, one of the reasons we really wanted to get him on here, we'll get him on to talk about sake another day, um, but um, he also published Japanese Whiskey um, uh, several years back. Um, and he's, his work has been very, very, very prolific, um, not just in beverages, but in a lot of um, culture around Japan as well. Um, and we've been actually really wanting to get him on the show for a while. And the summit um, proved to be a fantastic opportunity um, as we were looking at uh, the world of shochu. So what we're going to do is we're going to turn it over to Chris and Brian, and they're going to delve into that world for us. And along the way, there's going to be some videos and, and things in there as well. Um, you'll see um, Maya Ailey who um, showed you expert who has been super supportive. Um, we're gonna have a short video where she takes a tour um, to a distillery um, to visit uh, Mr. Komasa of Komasa Shuzo um, to examine um, these questions um, that we're talking about with regards to whiskey and shochu. So with that, let's see if we can jump in and find Christopher and Brian. Christopher and Brian, are you out there? We're here. Yes. Can you hear we're us? Here. There they are. Welcome gentlemen. Hello. <laughs> Welcome. Great to see you. Joining us from Christopher ran from from the bar this morning to the uh, to the <laughs> to garage the, to the to my closet. <laughs> <laughs> yep. And then we got Brian joining us from Osaka this morning. Home of Osaka. Yes. Yes. Uh, Osaka. Yes. Excellent. Uh, Brian, thank you so much for making time and and joining us here. Well, thank you for having me on. It's a it's a delight and an honor to to talk with you all today. I, I, there's a lot I want to ask you about your, your new book, um, the Japanese Sake Bible. Um, we're going to save that for another episode. Uh, we're going to lure you back on to the show another day um, so we can talk to you about that. Um, but for now, I will turn you over to uh, Mr. Pellegrini, um, and I'll turn kind of the show over to you. Um, and we're excited to hear about um, the world of whiskey and shochu. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. this is going to be great. Thank you very much, guys. Talk to you in about an hour. We're, okay. we're, we're, we're gonna we're gonna hide out uh, in the backstage for a little while um, and we'll be back to join you in oh, about 50 minutes or so okay all right see you soon all right cheers all right everybody welcome to our session devoted entirely to the delineating the differences between barley shochu and japanese whiskey uh one thing that you may not know very much about and another thing that you may have heard of before probably have heard of before and I'm very excited, as Justin was saying, to invite Brian Ashcraft onto the show. Um, he is a prolific writer. He is one of the senior writers for Kotaku. You may have seen his work there. He also is a contributor to J the Japan Times, and he's also you know, been a sen senior contributing editor at Wired and various other publications. Um, as we heard before, he just published the Sake Bible and uh, through Tuttle. 2020. And then more relevant to today's discussion is his uh, whiskey Bible or whiskey, sorry, the Japanese whiskey, all about Japanese whiskey, including actually a reference to some one of the makers that we're going to talk about today, which was a very nice coincidence. Anyways, without further ado, Brian, thank you very much for joining us. Great. It's uh, great to be here. Um, great to talk to you uh, on, a, on a wonderful uh, Saturday afternoon. Um, and yeah, and like, uh, I think it it is interesting uh, that that uh, that uh, you know the maker that we're going to talk about today, Komasa Jozo, uh, was in the book, and I think that that's because uh, Komasa Jozo has just been an incredibly important uh, drinks uh, maker in Japan. Mm -hmm. And um, you know, if if, I, if I'm going to be honest, I would say that they're you know top five, top ten important drink makers. For Japan for the post-war uh, era without a doubt. Um, so there, there's, a, there's a lot of history there uh, within the, the 20th century and they've really been a pioneer um, uh, through um, uh, uh, shochu making and, and then the stuff that they're doing now with whiskey is really really interesting. So I can't think of a better uh, company to talk about the difference between shochu um, and uh, Japanese whiskey. So I guess before we start, since you are the uh, shochu expert, uh, why don't you give us a, uh, a 
a quick uh, uh, rundown of, of, of shochu then. Oh, uh, sure. Yeah. I mean, yeah, let's start right with that. So shochu, for those of you who don't know, is a single distilled, single pot distilled spirit made from approved ingredients and their koji. Approved ingredients being various things. The best selling approved ingredient in Japan happens to be sweet potatoes. Number two, in terms of shipments and sales, is barley. Number three is rice. But then you can get into all sorts of interesting, more niche subcategories of the shochu world. Um, everything from kelp to carrots to azuki beans, and even a Japanese style of catnip known as silver vine. Uh, it's a very diverse probably the most diverse spirit in the world in terms of its aroma profile and flavor profile. Single pot distilled, that's very important. It has a lower alcohol content than what you might be accustomed to from most other spirits traditions, but it also comes packed with a lot of aroma and flavor, and that's what makes it so special. It's not a trend, it's been around for more than 500 years, but it still is one of Japan's best kept secrets. Now, today we're gonna focus on barley shochu in particular, one of the biggest subcategories in the country. And Komasa, as you said, Brian, is, is huge. And it's a, yeah. it's a company that I have a lot of respect for. Not right. only Komasa Shuzo, the, their Hyoki distillery, they have recently opened a whiskey distillery where they are making proper Japanese whiskey. So this is the perfect place to go to talk about the differences between something that's very, very old school Japanese and something that is relatively new school. Um, and I think that, well, and then also for the two of us later on, uh, you and I are gonna be able to taste through a couple of things, uh, one mm -hmm. that is freely available and one that is not yet available. So we're gonna be able to really see and talk about the differences between these two major traditions. Yeah, that's a really important, it's, uh, it, you know, it's, um, it, it's somewhat ironic because Japanese whiskey really isn't that old. I mean, it still doesn't have a proper, like proper Japanese whiskey, still doesn't have a hundred years of uh, history in Japan, yet uh, more people outside of Japan will know Japanese whiskey than shochu, um, which I think is, is interesting. Uh, the, the Japanese uh, whiskey tradition owes, it, owes more to Scotland. It's, it's done more in the Scottish tradition so you're going to get a you know a double distillation, and then you're going to it's going to be aged obviously in in wood. Uh, originally, though, Americans brought whiskey to Japan, mm -hmm. and and as as far as we know, uh, the first uh, uh, and this is from you know a newspaper article from you know the 1850s uh, that the first uh, uh, whiskey that that Japanese people actually imbibed was American whiskey. But uh, because of uh, Taketsuru-san, the, the, the gentleman who uh, was the uh, distillery manager at Yamazaki and then went off to found, uh, found Nika, uh, the, the, the country has really been on a scotch, uh, scotch whiskey tradition. And I, I think that what makes um, that uh, so interesting in relationship to shochu, especially the, the barley shochu, is and we kind of touched on this about how important uh, Komasa is, um, that that uh, the importance of casks in, in whiskey, and not just Japanese whiskey, uh, not, not just Japanese whiskey, but whiskey full stop. So uh, flavor is going to be around, you know, 70% uh, uh, from the cask, from the cask, the maturation, about 70% of the flavor is going to come through that. And um, um, uh, we can't kind of stress, uh, we can't uh, de-emphasize the importance of casks. And uh, uh, within Japan, uh, a lot of the kind of medium sized to smaller sized Japanese whiskey makers uh, are able to get good domestic casks because of the shochu industry, hmm. because of the barley shochu. And so uh, uh, without that, without that industry of aging um, uh, a barley shochu in Western style casts, because Western style casts aren't indigenous to Japan. Japan has its own caste tradition and it's sure. different. Uh, but, uh, you know, during the Meiji period uh, and on, they started making uh, Western style casts in Japan. And uh, 
Komasa jo Jozo's, uh, the reason why that, that company is so important uh, for this tradition was, uh, you know, during the mid to late 50s, uh, I think the exact year is maybe 57. Uh, they released a rice shochu, so it's not a it's not a barley, not not the one that we're uh, style that we're talking about today. Uh, that was matured in Western style casks, and because of this, then we we started to get a new uh, style of shochu, and then mugi sho mugi is you know uh, uh, just suited uh, much more to uh, this kind of maturation. Uh, it seems, which is why a lot of other producers started doing that. Um, and because of that, you started to get a domestic cooperage industry that was really healthy and independent. That's the important thing. Uh, so the big companies like Suntory and Nika, even Kidden, uh, they have a, a wide reach. Uh, you know, these are big, you know, big, uh, uh, you know, especially in the case of Suntory, uh, um, you know, big multinational companies. Sure. So they're able to get these kind of casks uh, and they have that infrastructure that, that they can, you know, uh, uh, smoothly make a uh, whiskey. And so for smaller to medium size whiskey makers, the fact that we have a, a domestic independent cooperage industry uh, means that the barrier for entry into making Japanese whiskey is lower that they can, uh, they can, you know, talk to sales reps in Japan and get stuff, uh, you know, uh, a, a lot easier to their uh, maybe exact specifications. So the, the cooperage that I'm really talking about here is a uh, Ariake barrel. Sure. And they do, yeah. they do about 90%, 90% of what they make is for shochu, 90%. Yeah. So, uh, you know, the figures might be slightly, maybe 88 now, you know what I mean? Okay. <laughs> because there's yeah. a, a few more, let's say whiskey makers, but we'll say ballpark of uh, 90%. Um, and what that means is that uh, there's just the supply of casks within the country that, that, that kind of really opens up options for, for Japanese whiskey uh, makers. So if you're somebody who really, really, really loves Japanese whiskey, you should be eternally grateful for the barley shochu industry because that's really that's making uh, uh, a lot of this uh, not necessarily possible, but it's making a lot easier. That's you know, interesting. It's, it's making a lot easier. So uh, I think that uh, we can't, uh, 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 you know, we can't overstate that enough. We can't say that, that shochu is really, really important to Japanese whiskey and not in the way that you think it would be, which is why for somebody who enjoys, very much enjoys Japanese whiskey and enjoys shochu as well, to, to kind of see this, uh, uh, um, uh, you know, without, without each category getting the proper respect that it deserves, sometimes can see, seem frustrating to me, um, sure. if, if you know what I mean. But yeah, yeah, definitely. That's really interesting that I, you know, the, it helped to really kickstart the whole and, and create supply for the whiskey industry. I think that's, that's a little tidbit that a lot of people are not aware of. Um, yeah, I mean, and the, the thing, like, and you can't, um, um, like, for example, when uh, takitsuda san went off to go set up uh, uh, the Yoichi distillery, one of the, like, first, like, big, big hires was a cooper, you know what sure. I mean? Uh, and a really, really famous cooper, uh, a guy named uh, uh, Komatsu, Komatsuzaki-san. And so he hired this guy because he was an expert at splitting and working with Japanese oak. And um, since then, I mean... Uh, Nika has has shifted uh, to American white oak because, to be honest, like American white oak is a lot cheaper. It's a lot more plentiful. Uh, it's easier to work. It doesn't leak. I mean, the kind of the famous line that you hear: if you have ten American white oak casks and one of them leak, that's a lot. But if you have like ten Japanese oak casks, uh, ten of them are going to eventually a leak. Huh, leak. So I mean, um, so yeah, you can't kind of. Uh, it, I mean, it just. Uh, casks are so important. The fact that there's a, that there's a, uh, just a, a world-class cooperage here um, uh, making stuff independently is huge for the Japanese whiskey industry. That's so interesting. Yeah. And I just want to, I want to step back for a second because sure. we, we may be um, causing people to believe that all barley shochu is cask aged. Right. Um, or that shochu in general is cask aged. And that's certainly not the point. I, I would say it's a, it's a very small minority of right. the product produced in Japan. 
Um, and I guess I should, I would be remiss if I did not mention that Japan actually has a barley shochu tradition that is protected internationally by the WTO. It's called mm. Iki Shochu. And mm -hmm. it's a rice koji starter fermentation, barley uh, steamed, pearled barley secondary fermentation uh, style mm -hmm. that is only made on Iki Island off the coast of Fukuoka. It's actually part of Nagasaki Prefecture. There are only seven distilleries there. It's a relatively small output, but it's an old tradition. Yeah. And that's, that's technically where barley shochu started from. And it wasn't cask, cask aged. Now, the biggest sellers in the barley industry right now are largely concentrated in Oita Prefecture, a bit over to the east in Kyushu, where mm -hmm. they make a often 100% barley, uh, often vacuum distilled, very light, um, sometimes has some floral or botanical qualities to it. Nice toasted notes underneath. Very mm -hmm. easy sipping barley shochu. So that's actually the standard. That's actually the norm. Right. But there's, there's a ton of variety. And what we're dealing with today, especially vis-a-vis -vis Komasa-san and mm -hmm. Komasa Jozo, is we're going to see some product that has been barrel aged because they're really, really good at that. Uh, and you have to, uh, it's, it's, it's further, it's, it's important to further contextualize it. It's like, why did this start in the 1950s, this style? Mm, sure. And it's like, well, Japanese, like whiskey within Japan was starting to take off, you know, uh, a proper whiskey has been made in Japan since the twenties. Uh, but even before that it had been imported into the country, but, uh, but it was mostly like expats or kind of like, I don't know, edgy, adventurous drinkers, but norm, uh, normal folks weren't drinking, um, uh, whiskey really until let's we'll say, you know, uh, thirties post-war kind of it really started to kick off in the post-war era. So by the 1950s, uh, uh, the domestic whiskey consumption was, was influential enough where shochu produ producers kind of maybe a light bulb in their head went off and said like, Oh, we could take these casts and it would be different. You know, it's not like they're making whiskey. They're not at all. It's something totally different, uh, sure. which I think is uh, fascinating. The other thing I just wanted to, to, to mention, uh, uh, just kind of wrapping this up, is that uh, one of the most interesting things that I've noticed that within the Japanese cooperage industry is that you'll have uh, coopers who are working at shochu makers, like their in-house cooperage, mm -hmm. and maybe they'll come over to whiskey, or maybe they're in a whiskey cooperage, like, you know, really big company, uh, their in-house cooperage, and then go over to, to, to shochu. And so this kind of like cross, uh, uh, this kind of uh, crossover of knowledge, I think just strengthens the domestic cooperage uh, industry. That's very interesting. That's a, that's a really interesting comment. Well, let's, um, let's, uh, let's head towards, you know, let's go straight to the, to the source here. Um, we're going to watch a pre-recorded video that features two people that Brian and I have a ton of respect for. One is uh, Yoshitsugu Komasa, the shacho, the, the, the president of Komasa Jozo and Kanosuke Whiskey Distillery. And uh, Komasa Jozo is a, obviously a bit older. Ko Kanosuke Whiskey Distillery is just a few years old. But both places are doing incredibly exciting things. And I think Brian will agree with me that it's, it's absolutely these two companies, you need to keep your eye on them because yeah. they just keep on releasing amazing things. And uh, they do amazing show too. And you can just, you can bet your bottom dollar. They are going to absolutely knock it out of the park with their whiskey when they can officially release that. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. Just, just, just kind of uh, piggybacking on what you said. Um, they're, they're, uh, obviously their show uh, distillery is this, you know, storied, uh, famous, uh, super important uh, uh, sh shochu uh, distillery, but uh, f for me, I think the the whiskey their their whiskey distillery um, is is out of all of the new Japanese whiskey distilleries, and there are a lot of them. There are a lot, um, and there's uh, it seems like there's more and more uh, with each coming year. Um, I'm this is the one that I'm really really uh, you know one of the ones that I'm most excited about. Oh, and I oh did, great. Yeah, and so, and just, 
and we'll get to the tasting and the reason why it's like the, the proof of that is in the glass and we'll get to yeah, that that's in, very true. In, in a minute but uh yes I, the the video i think is uh will be a, an informative look at uh the company yep and importantly the differences between barley shochu and japanese whiskey so please enjoy this video right now So, this is the same え、で、そして冷やした後に、ま、麹菌という菌をですね、え、繁殖をさせて、ま、2日間ほどで、ま、適上がったものがやれば麦麹になるわけですけども、え、それを使って、まずは、水と酵母を加えて、ま、発酵させてお
、まあ、カットというです、ね、工程を経ますので、まあ、そこはまた焼酎との大きな違いになるかなというふうに思います、まあ、ウイスキーの場合は基本的にはそのミドルの部分です、ね、だけを回収しましてそこから樽に入れていくというふうな流れになってまいりますねで焼酎の場合はあの基本的には最初の垂れ始めから、まあ、最後、まあ、あのだんだんアルコールが薄まってくるところまで回収をするということですので、まあ、基本的にはあのウイスキーのようなカップをすることはありません、はいはい、で焼酎の場合はステンレスの蒸留器を使うんですけどそうです、ね、ウイスキーはどういうウイスキーは銅製ですねはい形も異なるんですそうですね、あの基本的にはあのウイスキーと同じ形状の、えーまあ、ヘッドがこう、まあ、上がっていって、まあ、アームがこう来ているという形状はです、ね、まだ基本的には似てはいるんですけれども、まあ、焼酎の場合はその製あの材質が、まあ、ステンレスであり、ちょっとまた大きさも、まあ、いろんな形状を使う、えー、が行われているというのが、えー、実情ですので、えー、基本的には銅製が、まあ、ウイスキー、ステンレスが焼酎というものでありますね。焼酎は1回だけ蒸留できるので、そのもろみのもともとの味がもっと難しく、あまり調整できなくなる、えー、っとそこの調整の前の、そのまずはそのもろみから得られるその香り、味わいというものが、まあ、基本的に蒸圧蒸留という手法を取っていくと、その原料由来の香り、味わいがそのまま出出に移行してくるというのが、まあ、大きな特徴であります。逆にそれは蒸圧の蒸留の場合なんですけれども、減圧蒸留という場合は、その蒸留器のいわゆる圧力を下げることによって、低い,ある低い温度で,です、ねまあ、沸騰していきます。大体いい60度あたりが沸騰してくるわけなんですけれども、通常の場合、アルコールは、まあ、沸点がまあ78度ですので、約80度ですので、えー、そのぐらいになってくると、通常はアルコールが液体から気体になってまあ上がっていくわけなんですけれども、えー、蒸留器の圧力を下げることによって、低い温度で沸騰してくるんですね、そうすると、原因同意合いの香味というものが、すべての香りが出てくるわけではなくて、低い温度の単位のもので出てくる香りというものが中心にまあ上がってきますから、どちらかというと、非常に軽快な。まあ、あの麦焼酎のタイプになってくると、まあ、蒸圧の蒸留の場合は非常にその香味成分がまあ豊かな味わいのある、えー、麦焼酎の原酒ができていますけれども減圧蒸留の場合は軽快な香りということになっていきますね、はい、でなんかその麦焼酎の樽熟成、はい、樽に流してみるとどういう樽とかを使われるんですか、はいえー、っと現在我々が使っている樽なんですけれどもいわゆるバージンアメリカンホワイトオークすなわち、まああのまあ、シンダルですね、えー、こちらを基本的に中心に使いますいわゆる何も最初から、えー、何かが入っていたものではなくいわゆるホワイトオークを、まあ、セーダルをしてでそれをもう中をですね、えー、チャーリングをした後に我々の、まあ、焼酎の、まあ、麦焼酎の原酒をですね、まあ、加えまして熟成をさせるということが、まあ、主流になって今おりますがそれ以外の、まあ、樽に関しましてもえーまあ、トライアル的にはあというところと、あとはその出出の幅を、えー、広げるためにさ、えー、まざ、あ、まな、えー、樽というものを活用しているところですね。はい、でウイスキーの場合の樽も同じくバージョンホワイトオークとかそうですね、バージョンホワイトオーク、あるいはその我々が焼酎で使ってた、えー、樽、うんえー、こちらをですね、まあ、もう一度リチャーリングをしまして、えー、そこに、まあ、ウイスキー原酒を,を加えて、いわゆるまあ焼酎カスクというふうに僕らも呼んでおりますがそういった樽を使ったりだとかあるいはシェリーカスクまたバーボン,バーボンカスクあるいはワインですとか、まあ、ウイスキーでは最近ジャパニーズウイスキーの中で今非常に人気の高い樽だと水ならというです、ね、樽,が樽材がありますけれどもこれは日本特有の、まあ、水ならというです、ねまあ、木材オーク材ですけれども。まあ、それを使った、まあ、ウイスキーの熟成を、まあ、行っているということですね。Uh, we just got to see, we got to hear directly from Komasa Shacho about, you know, basically the major differences, and he explained it in way better detail than I ever could have about how Mugi Shochu is made, how barley Shochu is made, and then of course how whiskey is made. And if you understand how distillation works, then 
hopefully that was easy to wrap your brain around. But I, I'm sure that there's a lot of folks out there that have no idea what distillation is. And, and for them, well, you know what? You know, there's lots of books out there that you can use to study up. So um, the, the great thing here is that we get to now try some of the product. I don't know, do you have any comments about the video itself, Brian, before we start with the tasting? I, I thought something that's really interesting um, and kind of a, you know, maybe an easy way for people to delineate between, uh, let's say, shochu and then um, uh, whiskey is that he, he was talking about single distillation and steel stills. You know, I think that that's, uh, um, I think, a good way to, to uh, tradition, I mean, in, in Japan, there's a few exceptions, like historically, kind of a few exceptions, but, uh, you know, it's, uh, whiskey is going to be obviously malted barley, shochu is going to obviously use koji, sure. and then, and then uh, uh, the double distillation and copper stills for whiskey, I think is a big, um, you know, uh, uh, an easy way to kind of, you know, uh, separate it. But then the spirit that you get, um, the distillate that you get after that is not yet whiskey. We have to put it in wood and we need to put it in wood uh, uh, for to, to really be whiskey for three years. So right. uh, um, that's a, another thing. And you're going to, the, the whiskeys you're going to drink are, are obviously going to have more color uh, on them than shochu. Sh I mean, probably agree with me, shochu drinkers don't want like the he uh, heavily colored, uh, uh, generally speaking, we'll say. Well, um, well, you know, you actually can't. You There's yeah. a law that prevents uh, too much time on wood that right. it's related to the color of the shochu just so that there's no confusion. Right, 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 right. the right. two traditions. Um, do you think even right. though, even, even though that, um, let's say that, that law didn't exist, do you think that uh, shochu drinkers their expectations have been set that this is what shochu is and looks like that even I, if hmm, that's, the, the, interesting, that's an interesting the, comment. And I don't think, I think that probably there are a lot of folks who right. would balk, especially people who have been drinking shochu for a while. They would say, yeah, you know, I appreciate that, but that's right. a little bit too far away from what shochu is supposed to be. Right. So um, yeah, that's a, that's a, I never thought about that before. That's a very interesting um, hypothetical. Um, yeah, so uh, why don't, so we have, I guess, two samples. We do. That were kindly sent to us. Uh, why don't we start with the, the, uh, the shochu? Okay. Because yeah, it's coming in at 25% alcohol by volume. That's right. So um, we are going to try the migaki, the mellowed kozuru migaki, mm -hmm. which um, I actually have a bottle of up over my shoulder here, 25% alcohol. And this is, this is a, you know, very, very interesting uh, spirit. It's actually a blend of a few different, a few different spirits. Um, and I don't know what's the, we're just going to try it straight if I can get this thing off of here. Yes. Okay. And what, when you when you nose this, Brian, and, and actually I'm going to show people how how light it is comparatively speaking. You can right. see it's kind of a light straw color, maybe like a lemon yellow color almost. Yeah, I mean if you can same thing know, as well. Yeah, yeah. So it's not. I mean, if I put white paper behind it, you know, it's not particularly dark. Ooh. Yes. But the, the oak is very apparent right off the top. It's very creamy, you know, and like oh, yeah. I get I get like a, a nut and the, the, the thing that, you know, I, 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 this is going to be my second. I'm not going in this completely cold. I was kind enough to, to get another sample, which I, which I really, really enjoyed as well. Um, <laughs> but but uh, the, the thing, and, and I, I smell it now as well. It's like a, it's like a, there's like this like coconut, milk profile just straight through it's straight through on the nose and then a bit of like there's a like a bit of um kind of beeswax in the background that's you know vanilla vanilla ice cream and rose petal not bees beeswax like honeysuckle i guess would be a better honeysuckle okay got yeah. a little little sweeter yeah, there's still a 
tinge of waxiness, but. This is awesome doing a, a barley shochu tasting with a whiskey nerd. I like this. So drinking it, it's like, it's like, um, it's like coconut milk, but it's very floral. And then there's like cinnamon straight through it. Like, like kind of like really subtle red hots, that candy, you know what I mean? Uh, not cinnamon spice, but that kind of like cinnamon candy sweetness to it. Um, this is great. I mean, this is absolutely bang on fantastic. Um, it's just, I, I just, you know, and the thing that we can talk about this a little bit more, uh, the thing that's so interesting about this, and I think for, you know, as, as uh, primarily as a whiskey drinker, about barley uh, uh, shochu that's been aged in, in, in wood, is that there's stuff in there to get your bearings. You know what I mean? It's like, oh, okay, we're vanilla, honey. You know, it's like stuff like stuff that you're kind of familiar with, notes of hay or, you know, stuff like that. Uh, uh, um, but it's different. It's not whiskey. It's totally, it's not whiskey at all. No, not at all. And so you can get your bearings and then it's just this totally different world. It's, it's wild because we are getting the effect of the barrel on a moogie based product it's it's not distilled enough to kind of sublimate that characteristic and the right. moogie quality or i'm sorry i, I should have said koji right. on a koji uh fermented product and you know just one time through the still it's going to present itself and when that koji element and you know you often think of the word umami when you start talking about koji when right. that spends time on wood you get a whole, a whole, it's a whole different tangent in terms right. of what's possible. Yeah. And so um, I think for, for me, the, the, the real uh, appeal of shochu, uh, as I said, especially this, this kind of shochu for whiskey drinkers, that it's not, it's not like this is, you know, near whiskey or whiskey s or anything like that at all. And I think that uh, any kind of, direct comparison to whiskey is actually doing it a huge disservice. That's interesting. Um, because it's like undermining what makes it special. Um, but, but at the same time, there, there are certain ends, you know, as, as, a, as a whiskey drinker where it's not completely foreign. So for like a sweet potato shochu, to me, that feels just totally different. You know, it's mm -hmm. like, whoa, this is like, you know, there, there's a lot to, cont to, to contend here with. And then for, um, for, for this, it's like, oh, okay, I, I, you know, it's like a, it's like a, it's like a, uh, you know, the melody is kind of there, you're kind of familiar with it, but it's a totally different song, you know what I mean? Yeah, um, yeah, yeah, I totally get what you mean. That's, that's a very, I, I really like that. And I'm going to start to use that explanation, I think. I think it is really important to talk about shochu in terms of shochu. Right. You know, good shochu should be just just be thought of in terms of authentic or the word that is used in Japan, honkaku shochu. Right. And I think it's I think you're right. There is definitely a benefit to, you know, it doesn't need to, you know, kind of slide on the coattails of whiskey necessarily. There's some phenomenal product available in every corner of Kyushu, uh, right. you know, barrel aged or not. Right. So that's a great that's a great call out. The, the, the thing that um, has, has frustrated me when I go back to the States is that I'll see, uh, it's, often, it's a different style um, of shochu, but you'll see like, like rice whiskey. And, uh -huh. and, and, and for me, uh, and they're done by shochu producers, and for me, uh, what I find uh, ultimately frustrating about that. I get it. Okay. People are trying to sell something. They're trying to make money. It's a business. I understand that. Um, but, uh, you know, when we're talking whiskey, we need to, to, to be very clear about, uh, traditional whiskey grains, sure. uh, and the traditional whiskey process. Uh -huh. and, and, uh, Japan has, uh, you know, since the early 1920s adhered to that really closely. I mean, there's been, they've kind of gone off and done flourishes on stuff or done their different takes or different spins on certain things. Mm -hmm. uh, but generally speaking, generally speaking, they, they've been, uh, they've, they've respected the, the process uh, that's been handed down. They've, yeah. Remained and then they've mastered orthodox. it. Yeah, yeah. They've mastered it. And they've done stuff a little different, of course, and, you know, kind of done stuff that's even kind of uh, uh, unique. 
But uh, I think that, uh, you know, when I drink this, this is obviously a different style. This is Mugi, and uh, this is very clearly and, and, and obviously very proud of the fact that it's a, a barley shochu. But uh, this is a great, it's a great drink for food. Like I can drink this now and I can imagine sitting down to dinner as is, you know, just drinking this neat, uh, you know what I mean? 20, yeah. like, you know, some people might need to, to bring it. 25 might be a, a bit hot for some people, but yeah. they might want to bring it down a little. But I mean, I, I, right, it, right as it is right now, uh, I think it's perfectly acceptable for food. Uh, Japanese whiskey, even though a lot of times it's, it's a, you know, it's, it's, I'd say Japanese whiskey generally is a, can be a bit more friendly <laughs> than, a, than a certain, uh, certain, let's say, certain types of uh, scotch whiskey. It's much more friendly than like a, you know, uh, a super peaty uh, uh, scotch whiskey. Absolutely, um, absolutely. E even then, and you know, I know Japanese whiskey makers try to, to push this. Uh, I don't think it goes very well with, with food, especially Japanese food. I don't gotcha. think Japanese, uh, unless you're bringing it down a lot, uh, unless you're drinking it with a lot of water, a lot of soda, a lot of ice, bringing it down a, a lot, then I think it actually is kind of quite nice. But then you lose a lot of the kind of complexities and the subtleties sure. and the nuances sure. and stuff like that. So mm -hmm. um, uh, I think that for me, that's the appeal of shochu. It's like this is this is a great drink uh, for that that works well with food, um, and and uh, um, I just think the appeal of it. The appeal of this of this whiskey, and I guess we should crack open. The, it's not a whiskey yet. Yeah. It's two, two no, and a it's half. Not. It's uh, what does it say? It's thirty two months so, old. So uh, yeah, what a little over two, two and a half. Yep. Um, um, and this is coming in at fifty eight percent alcohol by volume. So that's uh coming in at uh, I think it's coming in at cast strength. Um, this is um, and you know, they, they sent two samples and the first sample, I was just going to drink it, uh, just a, a wee a, bit of it. A little, I, I, yeah. a wee dram. <laughs> a wee, a wee, just a, uh, just a little bit. And like, th that was gone. You know, <laughs> that was, oh my God. Um, this is really like, like this is, so the thing that it's so young, it but is, it's yeah. not young. It's so, it, it really is not. I, I'm glad you said that. I, like, this um, is not a young whiskey. It is young, but it's not. You know I, what yeah, I mean? that's what I, yeah. I yeah. Mean, it doesn't present as a young whiskey. It presents it's, as a phenomenally balanced, uh, you know, eight year or above. Yeah. It, it's like, uh, it's like when you meet somebody who's like, uh, 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 you know, maybe in their, their teens or early twenties and they're wise beyond their years. It's I, like, I like that. That's it's like that's, this. You know what I That's mean? A perfect in a, in a corollary. Graph. What do you get from this? So this is like, um, you know, the, the, I mean, it's, it's 58%, but it doesn't, the other thing that's interesting is that it doesn't, you don't, it doesn't hit you over the head with the alcohol. You know what I mean? At least not me. Um, you know, I, like on the top, I'm getting, uh, I, I'm getting like nail polish. Uh, the other thing that, the thing that's really interesting about this is that this is the kind of skate, like that, you know, the, the, the place where they're making uh, this whiskey is, has three different stills sure. and they're, they're different shaped and they're mm -hmm. different sized and the line arms, the, the thing where it comes out of the pot still are, are going in different directions. And I thought that that was very, very clever um, that they, that they, uh, um, there's just, a obviously, I mean, just this, a deep understanding of distillation and, and drink making just on dis on display, on, just looking at their kit, you know, you can, you can look at it like, you're, like, wow, they, these folks really, really know what they're doing. They want to make these, uh, uh, whiskeys with a lot of depth and, 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 uh, a lot of flavor and stuff like that, you know, sure. they're, and you can see it in this and it's not even a whiskey yet. It's two and it's over two and a half years old, but I get like science classroom nice. and it's, and it's not, and it's not like that it, it's, um, uh, uh, it's not peated, but it has like, it smells like, I guess the, the, it doesn't smell like peat, but it has this kind of like seaweed note to it. 
like kind of like a like naughty you know what i mean i get i get that yeah and that makes perfect sense given the proximity to the coast yeah I mean, they are it, on the coast it's a bit salty as well yeah you get a kind of a bit of sea salt um and then under that you get you're getting kind of like these honeyed notes uh as well it's really interesting it's really really interesting and so here this is like if somebody said like what's the if you know what's the difference between shochu and whiskey i've just had my nose in this glass that's all we've been talking about i've not taken a sip yet and i've just put my nose in it and i'm experiencing these different aromas and i'm talking about that and it's stimulating my brain and like all this stuff it's a different experience from drinking shochu the whole point of it is different and i think that that because uh, we're doing these back to back. Um, let me take a sip though before I, <laughs> <laughs> hold on. So cream, spice, uh, pepper, honey. I, and a lot of this is just the alcohol too as well because it's coming in kind of hot. Uh, but salty, again, it's that salty, which is like really, really interesting because it's got this like a naughty thing going on. And then you think of like, like those like kind of cracker, like, you know, like, yeah, like yeah. it, it, it reminds me of that. It reminds me of drinking that uh, uh, a bit of no, uh, moss, a bit of moss in there as well. And the, the other the other day when I when I tried this, one thing that I wrote down was, and this is maybe because I'm from Texas, but it reminded me of the fat on the bone of like barbecue. Like you have a I bone. I knew we were headed to barbecue eventually. Yeah. I knew <laughs> it was coming. <laughs> but but it, it's not, not, not the like smokiness of it, but that fat has a certain sweetness to it. And it, I just get a certain sweetness to it as well. Um, so going, um, also the other thing that I wrote was like vegetables, a bit of vegetable notes in there, cinnamon, a uh, granite. I got a bit of granite uh, as well. But uh, to me, this is the, the big, big distinction between drinking whiskey for me and shochu. This is like, we've, we've had dinner. Dinner was fantastic. I think this would go well with like a steak, to be honest. Like we could mm. do this with a steak, bring it down with some, some water, some ice, obviously w way down from 58. 58 is, yeah, yeah. <laughs> a bit right. hot. You won't um, finish your steak. <laughs> but, but um to me, that's, that's the ultimate, that, that's the like big appeal of shochu is it, that's a, it's a distilled spirit that we can really enjoy with dinner uh, that, that is pronounced enough, but isn't overpowering. Whereas this is like, we've had dinner and we're just gonna, you know, stick our, stick our noses in, in glasses and then just talk about it. Um, and so for me, I think that that's really the appeal of both spirits. And because we're doing this back and back back to back, and because we have both of these spirits, I think that we're better able to understand the appeal of shochu, the appeal of Japanese whiskey. And then because of that, as people who enjoy to drink, uh, we get this like clear understanding of how both shochu, as in this case, this barley shochu, and then this almost Japanese whiskey. Uh, yeah. um, uh, just needs a little, little bit more time in wood. Just four more months. <laughs> just four almost months there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Almost uh, there. Or yeah, I guess uh, yeah, a bit more than that. But yeah, um, uh, how having both having both shochu and whiskey makes the world a better place, you know, without a doubt. And uh, uh, I think if you're into like Japan and obviously Japanese drinks, it's worth exploring both, and not ex exploring them at the expense of the other. Uh, but really kind of, uh, uh, of appreciating, really getting in there and appreciating both of them because they're both fantastic. Yeah, the, the world is certainly a better place because we have them both. I'm going to put them both side by side, actually, just so you can see the differences in color. Yeah. Um, yeah it's pretty drastic. Uh, yeah. It's, I mean, I, I really like your description of, of the purpose of these drinks. And I think this gets into also, you know, there's, there's a conversation to be had about, well, why don't we see shochu pop up more often in cocktails?
cocktail bars. And, and then again, I think it kind of goes back to the, to a similar purpose. The people making these amazing drinks right. are making it for a different context. Right. They, they aren't necessarily, they don't necessarily have a cocktail bar in mind, although that is changing. Right. But, you know, if we go back to the Migaki, the, the, the barrel aged Mugi Shochu that we tried, I mean, mm. we were talking about drinking it straight. I think a lot of people would just put, put this over ice and I think it would be lovely. Mm. Um, I think you could just add a little bit of water to it. Right. Maybe more than, more than typical, maybe not more than typical with whiskey. I mean, I see a lot of people adding like just half a teaspoon of water to a whiskey. Maybe you add a full teaspoon to this just yeah. to see how that plays. Yeah, um, I, I mean, bubbles work too. I mean, if you, if you added just a tiny bit of water, both of them, I, I think they both would open up. Um, I, I just, the thing that I, I, I really, um, I really think is fascinating about shochu is, is the same thing that's fascinating with whiskey as well. You have, you know, cast strength. And then if the, 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 the distillery is going to bring it down to bottling to, you know, around 40%, they're going to use their own water to, to, to bring it down. And so you get kind of that, a lot of that mouth feel from that water. Sure. Right. And, yep. and, and you get obviously because for shochu, I mean, they're bringing it down a lot, you know, they're bringing it down a lot. Um, uh, you get even more of that mouth feel. So it's kind of like, um, you know, it's like when people buy a, 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 like a car, if somebody buys like a really, um, you know, somebody buys like a, a Subaru and then they spec it out themselves. Sometimes it looks really bad, but sure. if you buy, but if you get like an STI and it's already specced out, you just like can drive it off like that. And it's perfect. You know, that's the thing that I think is kind of interesting about Shochu. It's like, it's already specced out. You know, if you want to add water and ice and stuff like that, you can, but you can just, you know, it, especially if you're a whiskey drinker is you used to like hotter kind of higher level, uh, uh, a larger amount of alcohol uh, in your drink, you can just jump right in and it's, you know, it's ready to go. Yeah, that's 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 an uh, another amazing uh, metaphor there, Brian. You you are on fire today with the with the metaphors and the you know, I I want to bring something else in that's kind of in your wheelhouse, which is uh, a, a question that we've had and we don't have a whole lot of time left, but I feel like we should maybe address this. Uh, one of somebody asked the question of, okay, so what? When is somebody going to try? you know, a, a basically a koji based fermentation, but put it in a copper pot still. When is that going to happen? Or has it happened already? And, and in my mind, I'm thinking of a number of these uh, shochu makers who have now set up dedicated whiskey distilleries. Right. They're, they're definitely doing that. They haven't released it, but they're experimenting with it. Now, you and I both know that there's a very famous chemist yeah. who in America back in the 1800s, uh, you know, definitely made this a thing. Can you tell us, just give us a quick rundown of uh, Mr. Takamine? Oh yeah, so, so jo Jokichi Takamine it was this uh, you know, famous uh, uh, you know, researcher and uh, um, uh, chemist. And um, what he wanted to do was to bring down the price of making whiskey. And when you're making whiskey, you have to uh, malt the barley, and he thought if they used uh, uh, koji king, uh, if you know they used, if they made like a koji, they they could um, uh, do that quicker and make that uh, more inexpensively. And uh, they they tried, and it's still to be honest, it's still kind of unclear uh, whether or not uh, um, Takemine-san's uh, idea was actually implemented into product. We know that there was a distillery, the whiskey trust was involved, you know, there was a whole, you know, business apparatus and there was a lot of kind of fanfare and interest in that. Um, uh, I've heard that there are bottles of it, that there was at least one bottle of it kind of floating around. Uh, and people I've talked to have seen that bottle, but we can't, we haven't been able to track down said bottle. So, so we haven't been able to drink. But what's interesting is when uh, Takatsuru san uh, the, you know, the founder of Nika uh, was sent, uh, went uh, over to, to Scotland. He was asked about this. He was asked about uh, 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 making, uh, uh, using Kool Jikin in this way. And he actually, uh, his 
you know, uh, Taketsuru Shuzo is a, is a sake maker in uh, Hiroshima, and that's connected through his family. He had some sent to him, some kojikin sent to him, and they tried it, and it didn't quite, it didn't quite work out. And that might be for uh, uh, various a, reasons, a, a variety of reasons. Not yeah, that sure. it, it, not that it's not suitable, not that it, it's a, uh, necessarily a bad idea. But I think that uh, for me personally, when I say like you know, whiskey, Japanese whiskey needs to be traditional whiskey grains, needs to be. Uh, double distillation, distilled in copper, and then, you know, aged in wood, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Um, I would lean kind of malted barley is important, but part of me also is not, I don't have my foot completely on the gas with that because there is this history. Sure. There is this history and there is this connection. And I think that if, 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 if somebody kind of followed all the other rules for, for whiskey making and then just did this kind of variation, uh, I think you'd have something really fascinating and I think you'd have something really interesting and you'd have this kind of new segment, which is, is, is different than kind of uh, shochu that's been passed off in the U S as Japanese whiskey. Sure. Uh, the, the one thing that I would kind of uh, put a, a, a pin in is that it would need to be clearly demarked, like, you know, marked of what this is, you know, yeah, it has um, to be transparent. It has to be transparent. It has to be clear. This is what this is. This is kind of the point of it and explained uh, in this way. But uh, I think that uh, it's fascinating. And I think the history of it's fascinating as well. And I'm sad I never was able to try, track down that bottle and open it and drink it all. Well, now you have me hot <laughs> on the hunt as well. So I think we will, we will be searching together. If you find it, you share it with me. If I find it, I'll share it with you. That sounds um, really good. <laughs> fantastic episode. Thank you so much, Brian. This has been great, very educational. Um, and thank you to everybody who, who watched and, and commented in the chat. And we will uh, continue soon. We're going to send it back to the, the studio downtown in Toranomong. Um, and Justin, we, we, uh, we absolutely filled that, that 50 something minutes, I think, didn't we? And you made use of every, every last second, every last ounce of that. Thank you. <laughs> Our pleasure. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I, I said it's the, this is, it seems like a given that this should be a conversation that's happening that people are talking about. And you guys just killed it. Thank you so much for just distilling that down. No, no Literally. pun intended. No, oh, no, no, no. nicely <laughs> done. Nicely done. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, yeah, definitely mind blown. Um, um, every time I hear Chris speaking in particular, I realize how little I know about shochu and what a huge and diverse world. Um, of bearers of shochu and awamori that needs to be further investigated and discussed. Yeah, you guys absolutely killed it. Thank you, Brian. And thank you so much for making time. That was excellent. I said, we get, we get kind of trapped in our, in our little sake shochu bubble over here. And uh, we don't always, uh, I, I, I know I don't spend nearly enough time with the world of whiskey, but I've, I've been prompted to do so as soon as these, these 48 hours are done. I know, I know, yeah, I know. <laughs> And how cool is it to have a whiskey expert commenting on a shochu? That, that was, that was phenomenal. Brilliant. It was brilliant. <laughs> I, the whole time we were listening, we were all going, and there were a few comments as well, that it was like, why, why, why is, has this not happened in, sure. in a similar yeah. format? So I'm Fantastic. super excited to be able to, um, it's after the summit, all, every, everything's going to be archived. So we'll, we'll chop these up into, into segments, and they're all going to be archived. So I'm super excited, actually, to put this out into the world again. Um, and this will be a reference for people. It's not for us, it's for you. 